You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special <laughs> guest in the building. Listen, this is my partner. This is my brother, uh, Andrew Schultz, uh, my co-host on the Brilliant Idiots podcast. Look, I got to run to catch a flight. You're Wait, before you do, here, can you believe this? I got, I got a question before I go too, so what's your question? My question is, <laughs> what? the now worst. You, now, allegedly, yeah. your brother put his hands on Charlemagne. Did you Ooh. set him up? That, was that a setup Ooh. for your brother to put hands on Charlemagne? Uh, my bro did. Oh, we talked about that though. Did we? On the oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. My, my brother did swing on Charlemagne, but you know, he's impossible to hit. And uh, Charlamagne about to reflex, oh, baby. yeah, dude, cat like we, you know, Black Charlamagne Panther was coming out, he had that whole you lucky motivation. Charlamagne didn't pull out them brass knuckles. On oh, he your did brother. on your brother. I mean, he did look a lot of people jumped on him. Your brother, yeah, yeah, but like they we grabbed him. Greg, his family, nobody too, jumped though. him. His family, too. You got to understand, it's like we're recording a podcast, and out of nowhere, Greg just comes from the side. Well, you got to tell the full story. Greg has my brother was dealing with mental illness, yes. man. It's not like you know Charlamagne says some wild shit. You know when you're dealing with mental illness, you have voices in your head. Mm -hmm. You know you hearing certain things so that aren't reality. So all the stuff that Charlamagne has been saying throughout the years, he probably just was like, he's a bad guy, and I gotta get him. Well, Yo, no, he said this is God. That's all he said to me. So this when is God. you're hearing things, you think you start to justify it, right? And mm -hmm. you're like, oh, this voice that I'm hearing must be God, because imagine you were hearing something. Mm -hmm. I mean, even read the Quran, right? Like, Muhammad heard voices from God, mm -hmm. right? And at first he was like, am I going crazy? Because that's the natural reaction. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you're hearing voices, to believe is God ain't even that crazy, right? Because it's either I'm crazy or God's talking to me. Shoot, shoot I'd rather God be talking to me. So God, I guess, told him in that moment he needed to punch Charlemagne. Wait a minute. Wow. You so it was God's plan. I got one. So, so the it brother, was God's plan, the brother exactly. me too? The same, uh, the one brother. The brother yeah. taped me too. Yeah. No, no, he taped, he, he's a videographer. You can't even oh, yeah, say yeah, me yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what? Yeah, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what did Greg, he's punching you, he's <laughs> grabbing <laughs> Envy's he's balls. He's raping rapists? Yeah, what's going on out here? So he swung on Charlemagne and... Swung on Charlemagne. I don't know how Charlemagne missed him. He was right there. He leaned right in. He was like, this is God. Oh, he warned him. Yeah, what he warned him. Something good happens after a man leans into you and says, this is God. But you knew prison stuff right there, bro. <laughs> God leads right up this in your earlobe. <laughs> <This is God. laughs> he's, he's a fist or a dick. It's coming at you next. Okay, That's true. What do you pick? I didn't pick nothing. I ducked. <laughs> yeah, you did slip it. I ducked. I'll be honest. Way. But it was good. And then, you know, we all just restrained him and we knew what was going on. I mean, we've been dealing with that for a while. My brother had swung on me on the podcast before. You remember that. Yes. You know what I mean? During so, the podcast? During the podcast. During the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo, we're very uh, accepting and open. Like, that's what you... We're progressive. Well, what you know what I mean? Like, none of these dudes here swinging on y'all. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You don't got to deal with violence in the workplace. <laughs> Do Talk we? about me too. You know what I mean? Yeah, just a bunch of yelling and screaming exactly. going on in this studio. No real fighting. So, so yeah. Yeah. If your brother feels misguided, just pull up then. <laughs> so wait a minute. Words. So wait a minute. All, the, all the trash rappers talk here. Nobody swung. It took my brother to be like, nah, God needs me to knock this dude out. He needs me to do it for Birdman. He needs me to do it for Takashi. He needs me to do it for Kanye. Greg out here doing all the work. All of them. Oh, no, that's well, true. All the gangster rappers said they were going to do they wanted, and my brother just pulled up like you need one you still missed though yo it's destiny man it's all because he wasn't supposed to hit you but did yeah. he hit you your brother hit you oh yeah plenty times <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah 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 he hit me right outside the studio you didn't know that i was leaving with him and uh, listen i love my brother more than anything in the world you know what i mean so it's it's but uh, we were leaving the studio and I, and I was just like hey man i love you we're gonna get you some help don't worry i'm gonna go to the hospital with you right now and he turned to face me and, uh, and in my head i was like I'm pretty sure he didn't hear me say I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure he probably heard he me say some you. other stuff, you know. And then he just started swinging. And next thing I knew, out of nowhere, uh, uh, wax. I knew wax was coming because I heard the pockets in his jeans. You heard the Timberlands. Yeah, and and and, it, and I and wax just grabbed him and threw it off me. My brother's big. My brother's like six mm -hmm. six, yes. you know, two something probably. And uh, then they just they just did that and. It was tough, man. Well, mental illness is a real thing, Absolutely. though. Absolutely. Like, Bro, I mean, we, I've known really Greg is. for a while. We, I watched the brain deteriorate or whatever. Yeah, like, it was weird. Because you fall into it. It's one of those things where, like, you're healthy for a little while as long as you're on the drugs. The hardest thing about mental illness, right, is that, like, especially if you're dealing with things like bipolar, right, mm -hmm. is that when you feel good, when you get the up, you it think feels you don't amazing. Need medication. Bang. Because imagine you woke up feeling great. You're like, I don't want to take that medication. Yeah. It's going right. to make me feel worse. Mm -hmm. We take meds to feel better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But imagine you had to take something to bring you down. And sometimes that medication makes people nauseous. Oh, the word you can't get your penis hard. Right. You know yeah, what I mean? I like, or you, or you, or you bust too fast. Yeah, you don't gotta deal with that. Mm -hmm. You just get dry vag. <laughs> but we have things for that.
Now, what's your That's last right. question? You said you had a Saliva. question before you get up out of here. You oh, go. yeah. I, I got to mm-hmm. go. Andrew is going to be at Gotham Comedy Club uh, all Friday, yes. April 13th, Saturday, April 14th at 8 p.m. But uh, I, I deal with Andrew every week. Mm-hmm. Okay, so y'all can deal with him for a while. Oh, maybe he but, could, but, uh, but, you but could give us some insight into Charlotte. Fine. Talk, Ooh, uh, talk when I all leave. Right. Now, define, this is my question. Uh, in one of your recent questions of the day, yes, yes, you discussed that good work ethic isn't good for a prostitute. That's true. And yeah. I'm leaving. I'll uh, get the answer later. But I want you to explain that. <laughs> I want you to explain First of all, I hate you. I, want you to I hate you. That. I hate you. Yo, come, come through the breakfast club. I got you. You know what's interesting about being a prostitute? The less experience you have at your job, the more you make. Good work ethic is not good for a horse. You putting in 80 hour weeks, that pussy gonna be worth nothing. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, would you want a prostitute with a lot of mileage? That's what I'm saying. But that's their job. Just like saying, would you want a flight attendant with a lot of mileage? Yes. Yeah, but really flight attendant is different flight because I don't have to don't be inside if, one. If somebody's a prostitute, she just got to give me her, my half a coke. You don't want them to be the best, most hardworking prostitute. Absolutely not. I want her to barely be a prostitute. I want her that like, makes to, sense. yeah, I want to come on hard times. She needs some rent money, and then I'm the first one but or the then second. That's like you don't have really like a. You want a good veterans drive. minimum prostitute? You want Vince Carter? As a prostitute. If you're a prostitute, you're supposed to work, right? And bring in that money. No, but if you were Because if s- you're barely making any money because you're not barely working, what's the point yeah, of being a prostitute? Yeah, but I'm not worried about her money. I get what he's saying. I'm you know, worried about me getting STDs. Well, then maybe she shouldn't be a prostitute. I mean, that's her life. I'm talking about me. Mm-hmm. I so, want to... You, you know, know what I mean? Off. I get what he's saying. But you can get STDs from anybody. I mean, not as Escorts, and they get uh, probably checked... Definitely more than the average person. I mean, how many people really? I mean, you want someone to have a little bit of STDs, like you want? No, no, don't. You don't. You want them to have HPV at least. No. If Why? you don't have HPV, you're a dork. I don't want to have sex with you if you don't got but at least men HPV. Men don't even know if they have HPV. That's the beauty of it. That's why you don't care about it. That's not. That's of very course. selfish. Yo, it is true how like God really screws women when it comes to STDs. Because men can actually transmit HPV to different women, right? That's, that's how you correct. know women Absolutely. shouldn't be out here taking penises all the time. Because think about it, we get HPV, we don't even know we got it. You get HPV, you get like vagina cancer. So we're supposed to be hoes, you're not. But you know what, sometimes women don't know they have something, and guess what you get? What Burning get? and green discharge from your penis. Yeah, but I just take a penicillin, I'm guys, good. Guys, guys, can we not talk about discharge and penises and everything like that? This is how me and Angelique connect. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> so what STDs have you had? Um, I probably got HPV. I mean, I got the shot, you know, to prevent, what is it called? Uh, what is that thing you, you call? You got the shot? I thought it was only for kids. Well, that, you're absolutely right. It's crazy that you say kids, but I bribed my doctor. Did you? For real? Yeah, yeah. So, like, I hit my bed. I was like, yo, just give me that shot anyway. He's like, yo, you're 30. You got it already. I was like, bro, don't <laughs> tell me what I got. And I was like, give me the shot. So he gave me the shot. You got to go three different times, and it's supposedly like uh, that's for hepatitis. No, no, no it's for, for HPV. HPV. Oh, for H- if you have Why kids out there, you, you should definitely take the shot. shot. Like you should definitely have your kids take the shot early. Yeah, regardless. They do it with teens, but then the they teens, just yeah. stop at like twenty three because they're like, yo, you got it. You got it already. Because yeah. if you take two dicks, you got or penises. Can we curse or so not? So you've taken you two did. dicks. My bad. Say what? You've taken two dicks. I- I've taken zero dicks. So you just said I definitely have it because if you take two dicks, this is weird. I was saying for girls. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I haven't <laughs> taken any penises. No, no, no. <laughs> Now tell Not us yet. A, I no don't know. Ever tried <laughs> you never know. I'm sure there's dudes that have tried me. Yeah, yeah. They, there's dudes that want to have sex with me. Yeah. I'm. I'm. You know. I'm charming. Like what happened? What happened to a dude? I mean, I don't know. I went to. I was at a gay bar once with like uh, some friends, and uh, and like yeah, dudes pulled up, and I felt bad being there. To be honest with you, you should feel bad if no one tries you. Yo. So that's the thing, right? It's like. I would feel bad if no one tries me, but at the same time, I felt bad just being there because I become like the snotty girl who just wants right, to dance. Like, why am I here if I'm not with it? Like, I don't like girls who have boyfriends that go to the club. Like, it's not for you. It's I'm... a hunting ground. If you're not ready to get hunted, well, go somewhere else. Everyone in the club isn't single now. It could be your friend's. You birth- should be. Why are you at? You, you... It could be your friend's birthday. A so I celebrate at of, home. You, a group of you go. Your girls want to go to the club, dance with each other. If you go paintballing, you' gonna get shot. Not if you're good. No, you're going to get shot. You're going to get shot. <laughs> Everybody's going to get shot. You know what I'm saying? So, And that's the thing. That's what the club is for. We're there to meet people. Don't be there. I just want to dance. Go dance at home. You, you got guys playing at home. Music? You maybe, got Spotify. Maybe DJ Envy's DJing in the club. Maybe the Breakfast Club is going to be there. Maybe I love the Breakfast Club. Yo, DJ club. Envy, you're a DJ. Yes. Has music ever been DJed so good that you would be there without women? No. It's an excuse. That's not true because I... It's an excuse to meet women. That's why we go. Maybe you guys. I think guys go to the club to meet women, but women might not necessarily go to Women go to the club to, to be guys. desired. Okay, and you could be desired even if you How have How we boyfriend. desired. Oh, yeah, exactly. Women want to be desired. That's why you get fake boobs even though you got a man. Because you want everybody else to look at you and be like, wow, she's fine. Or when your man you isn't like enough. Or maybe you like my clothes fit better in this. 
Yeah, all right. But if your man likes the way you look, who cares what everybody else thinks? That, now, tell us about Charlemagne a little bit, right? Talk to oh, me. Oh, Lord. Now, Charlemagne, <laughs> uh, there's rumor that he dyed his face a little bit. Yeah. And uh, I think you can, conf- well, you know. Bleached his bleached face, his you're face. saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you confirmed it on a, on one of your episodes early on that you believe that he uh, bleached his face and he told you that it was a skin, re- you know, skin remedy or whatever. Regimen. Oh, I don't think he did. You don't think he did? I think, I think uh, he just chose one color. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? Like, I think he was, like, multicolored in the face. Different shades of, exactly. shades of gray. Yeah, yeah, he had different shades of, of black, I guess he was. He was, like, one of those Bahamian pigs, mm-hmm. you know, that have, like, the different colors on their body, and then he just picked one to the have. The lightest one. I mean, listen, it's yeah. up to you. You get to choose. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if you have some... I don't know if you can go the dark one. Maybe it's easier to go <laughs> you can't light. can't go the dark one. Maybe, maybe you can. I don't know. What's Charlemagne's biggest insecurity, you think? Ooh, in, biggest insecurity. Oh, that's it. it. That's a good one. I don't know. Wildly competitive. I know that. Wildly competitive. Yeah. If you have to say one thing to tick him off, what would you say? Talk about the way he dresses. Uh, he knows he can't dress. No, because remember Does that he time he got that? so mad. He gets really um, sensitive about, well, yeah, about so it. We actually dressed like DMX and Joe in the nineties. Yeah, that's why he got mad. Yeah, that I posted, time. really. I posted a picture of him and like, what is he wearing? And I think Wiz Khalifa commented like he looks like. Um, uh, DMX in the 90s. And he yeah, got... Wiz can't talk because Wiz look like Aerosmith. But he got so <laughs> upset about it. Yeah, but like, I, I don't care. I don't care how men dress. So what, what's one thing that you think would take You know what I mean? Like, because like, you could get under his skin. Because I, I listen sometimes you guys argue like fucking crazy. You know how to get under his skin. Like a married couple. How we do, Yeah, absolutely. I love debating him because he's great at it. He's very good debater. He's, he's excellent at like uh, m- making a point penetrate. That makes sense. He's he's excellent. That at That penetrate word is a Charlemagne word, but go ahead. That's right. But you know what I mean. Like it mm-hmm. it it gets direct. You know, mm-hmm. uh, what might take me three sentences, he'll get out in like four words. Got gotcha. you. Boom. And I think that's what makes him so good at this. Mm-hmm. Um, but what gets under his skin, man? I don't know. I don't really try to get under his skin. To be mm-hmm. honest with you, I know just disagreeing with him does. Right. Anytime, if you want to bother him, just say eh, I don't feel that feel that way. Whatever he says, just say the opposite. <laughs> just say, I don't feel that way. Not really. I mean, it's only blue because it reflects that, you know what I mean? And they have some science behind it. He'll blow his mind. <laughs> just like, look up. Look up. What color is that? That's a Knicks jersey. Just look up. And then he'll be like, you're so stupid. Everybody's stupid. It's stupid. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> if everybody don't agree with me, it's dumb. Mm-hmm. You know? So um, you guys have been doing the podcast, Br- Brilliant Idiots, for such a long time. <sighs> it's the best. Yeah. It's the best. I mean, you guys do podcasts. Like, mm-hmm. it's a little mm-hmm. bit longer form. And also, I feel like, it, it's the people that truly want to listen to you so you can be a little bit uh, less politically correct, right? right? Like when you're doing a platform like this, I imagine you have people that just like you don't like you, mm-hmm. just like you don't like you, right. just like Charlotte don't like you guys, you know? Yes. So whatever you say, when someone doesn't like you, whatever you say is wrong. Right. Absolutely. It doesn't matter. Even if it's right, you could donate a million dollars to charity and they'll be like, oh, that's a tax write off. Do you feel like times have changed Absolutely. so much since you guys started doing Brilliant Idiots Yo. that there's so many things that you used to be able to say that you can't say now? I don't even, I'm a comic. I don't even understand the political correctness that's going on. Like, I don't even understand what's happening in the world. Like, some of these things that you're not supposed to say, like, I was just thinking recently, recently like the word tranny, right? You can't use that word. You can't say that word. Why is that wrong? Because why is it hateful? A trans woman or a trans man? Because trans people have a problem with that word. But why is it hateful? Right? Like for me, it's not exactly. I don't know. And we don't even. And if if you even ask that question, you're ignorant. You're a piece of trash, etc. Look, the word tranny is not hateful. It's shorter. Transgender, tranny, grandmother, granny. My it's not hateful. Lo- logically, it's it, endearing. It makes sense, but, but, I, but I will let me ask you a question. If they have a problem yes. with it, you got to respect I'm going to call you whatever you want to call. I'm going to call you whatever you want to be called, right? But, you can't, you but can't. don't put hate on my soul. You know what I'm saying? Don't say because I said that it means that I hate you because it never won. I'm just not going to say transgender. You ever meet somebody who's like, I'm El Salvadorian. You're just like Mexican. It's less syllables. Do you know what I mean? Well, if they're not Mexican and they El Salvador, just like. It's less syllables. It's like midget. You can't you say can't midget. You can't do that. You got to say little thing. person. Some, and then you got to okay. say dwarf. And then you got to say this. I'm, I'm just going to call you Tyrion from Game of Thrones. If somebody says something to you and they say, okay, I don't like this. When you say that, that's wrong. And they tell you that. And, I and then I respect you, it. Then you respect it. So that's it is what it is. No, I, I respect tell. it. You could do, but I feel you like you know what's interesting. Like people would say things like, "Oh, she has chinky eyes." You can't really use that. Now I know that because I'm half Asian, mm-hmm. but I don't assume there's a lot of people that don't think there's anything wrong and don't mean it in a hateful way. Yeah, and once so, you know that, mm-hmm. then you don't do it because people are offended. But I right. feel like there's this oppression Olympics is going on where people are like trying to be offended, right? And they're seeing like the most offended groups, right? What they're like, you? Black, uh, nothing. 
They're like, uh, <laughs> they're like, uh, uh, you know, black people. Black people have uh, a word that's really bad and can be used against them. So what is our word? We need a bad word, just mm. like black uh, training. Okay, that's gonna be our bad word. Do you know what I mean? Like every group is vying for this this uh, top spot of being offended. And it's just weird. Like, it's, it's peculiar. Like, I never had anything against trans people ever in my life. You know what I mean? Well, I just thought that that was what see, you called it for short, because I'm not going to say transgendered male. But you know what the they difference is? Is like a white, I say trans now. A, a white person might say, you know what? I don't understand the word nigga, why it affects people. Because I hear it in every rap song. That doesn't mean that it doesn't affect a black person differently. Yeah, but if you I'm research... Not a trans sec- what, what can I say you? You can say trans. You're not a trans, I'm not a person. trans person. You're not a trans person. person. I might not understand what that word Absolutely. means to me or how it feels. No, no, you, you make a good point about that. What I would say is like, all you got to do is a little research, mm-hmm. right? And if you did some research of the N word, from its existence, it's described black slaves. Right. Absolutely. It comes from the Portuguese word for black, mm-hmm. right? So it's, that's what it's been there for right. from the triangle tr- uh, slave trade, right? So as someone who knows that, I'm going to stay away from that word. Like my whole life, I, we could, like my dad took away Snoop Dogg's doggy style tape when I was a kid because he heard it. You right. know what I mean? So like, but I'm aware of that. But the word tranny is just short for... You're still using it, Andrew. Sorry. The, you know that word I, that I ends in a Y. Is yeah. still short for transgender. I'm Correct. acknowledging the, the, the word. My name is Andrew. What's a short name for me? Andy. Andy. Your name's Angela. What's a short name for you? Angie. Angie. For Angela. But that's fine. No, and, and I'm going to call you Angela. <laughs> All I'm saying is like when we shorten something and add a Y, it's but, not okay. hateful. If someone calls you by your full name, they're mad. If someone, my mom goes, Andrew Cameron, Andrew Cameron Schultz, I'm like, oh, what I do? Mm-hmm. If she goes, Andy, I'm going to get I'm gonna get a snack or I got to help her with a printer or some sh- You know what I mean? Like, so what's, what's the worst thing that you said that people were offended by? I know oh, one time people thought uproar. you didn't like women. I thought it was something about I seen that they, they, they thought you didn't like. People always get mad at you for some reason. Oh man, people, that's what it is. But like, like, when, like we said, <laughs> like when people don't like you, they're gonna find some way. My feeling is like, I come from like a strong mom. Mm-hmm. My mom's an immigrant. Can't you know stop going to school when she's 15 years old in Scotland? Come poor, poor as hell. Comes to America, lives the American dream. Right, no education ends up buying property. My dad, who comes from privilege here in America, ends up working for my mom. You know what I mean? She's the dream. So, like, it's hard for me to hear some, like, chick who's going to Harvard talking about how hard it is to be a woman. Mm -hmm. I'm just like... I can't. Like, I just can't. So you don't think it's difficult being a woman? You don't think it's it's a lot harder than being a man? I I think that we, we judge how hard something is based on too few metrics. So, for example, like... Are there disadvantages to being a man or disadvantages to being a woman? Absolutely. Are there disadvantages to being a minority? Absolutely. But other things can counterbalance. You know what I mean? Like to act like every black person disadvantaged uh, compared to every white person well, would be untrue. I don't untrue. think anybody could say every anything. That's what I'm saying. Like Will Smith's kids but, are way more privileged than some white trailer park trash kids. Your kids are way more privileged than some white but trailer if you look park at trash kids. No, not necessarily. But if you look Hold at statistics, on. you can see that there's a disadvantage across the board that we're fighting against. What statistics? Like if you say that women make 80 cents to every dollar that men make for but the same job. But that's not true. That's a myth. No, that is true. That's another thing. Like a not, lot of women do get paid less for the same job. That's another that thing. What they do. do, they sell you these lies, and women believe it. Like honestly, you could just tell women anything, and they're gonna believe it as long as it fits the oppression dynamic. So you don't think women get paid less than men, though? It. it here's the thing. It's the same job. Here's the thing. Do they? No, actually, women eighteen to thirty four make more than men. Even for the if same you look job. at, even if you look in Hollywood, they make more than men. Take even that. if you look in Hollywood at what, what these actors are getting paid yeah. for lead roles in movies yeah. and lead roles. Name in TV a female shows. Dwayne Johnson. I name mean, a female. There's... Name a female Dwayne Johnson. Name someone who brings money to the table like Dwayne Johnson. Glenn Close. <laughs> I you mean, know what I mean? Like Helen Mirren. Name one girl if you look that at, could bring that but money. But I'm talking about people that are in the same movie that are both starring in a movie. Do you think it's together, possible that one person can bring together. more to a movie than another? Yes. And should that person who brings more get paid more? Absolutely. Like, right, you DJ all the time. You got openers for you. They shouldn't make more money than you. Of course not. Because you're the headliner. Mm-hmm. So what I'm saying is once there's a woman who's bringing headlining money, she deserves that and she'll get it. Even if you look at black women as opposed to white women in acting also, it's something that has been a conversation in Hollywood now that women themselves are speaking up for. You ne- Listen, I, she needs, Octavia Spencer needs to make more money because she's starring in this movie and she has the background. Good, ask for it. Movies. And that's a problem women and don't they ask. Actually, and, they, and they actually did demand that. Good, that demand. Like, mm-hmm. that's what men do. We demand. Like, ask Barbara Corcoran. It's so funny. Barbara and Corcoran, women. you know Corcoran Group? Mm-hmm. So Barbara Corcoran, she's, you know, a beast of a woman. She's probably a billionaire, big real estate. Absolutely. Group. And she was like, why do men make, they asked her, like, why do men make more? And she goes, I'll be honest with you, and it breaks my heart to say this, but, like, they just know how to ask for a raise. When a, a woman comes in and asks for a raise, 
she, I'll say to her, Barbara goes, I'll say no. And she'll be like, okay, well, thank you. When a man comes in and asks for a raise, he'll, she'll say no. And the man will go, okay, well, what do I need to do to get that raise? And now, me and Envy had this whole conversation different. before about asking for a raise, because I actually am, uh, will go ask for a raise, and I did that before several times. That's, why you, that's been, why you are where you and are. And I have been telling my friends also and kind of teaching them how you go about asking for a raise, because when you go in and ask for a raise, and what actually sparked me to do that was an article that I read when I was a lot younger in Marie Claire magazine, mm -hmm. where they said that women don't ask for raises and don't negotiate their salaries the way that men do. Yeah. Which is true. But but men will get offered a higher starting salary than a man than a woman will. We don't know that for a fact that's the thing like we just believe things like I mean, yeah but they have I, I all kinds but it, like they I, I do have all kinds of um apps and everything it. what is it called glass check glass this, door right? or whatever that check talks this about i'm gonna throw some statistics out you right i'm gonna tell you what it is so check it right we say women make you know they say women make 80 cents a dollar 70 cents a dollar whatever right. it is it does, you know the numbers change every day right so here's the thing just because they make less doesn't mean it's due to sexism right what so for example 90 percent of the people in prison are male right is that because the justice system is sexist is no. that because judges are More like male are committing crimes so when you go outside today and you look at a construction site how many girls with ponytails you gonna see on it there's a construction site right here there's about eight people and it's two females two females mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right so 75 percent of the outside workforce is male when you go to a gas station the most dangerous job in the world working at a gas station attendant how many how many females you see running that at three in the morning you never seen one seen in your one. life. Nope. Ice road truckers. Zero. I don't watch that show. They don't do dangerous. You don't do dangerous jobs. You don't work outside. There are choices. You choose the five lowest paying majors in college. Women choose the five. How many female engineers go to an engineer program? It's twenty to one male to female. But you know that starts off early. So it's like that starts off earlier when you're younger with education with them actually trying to direct people into different. Now this is I'm hundred percent with you, right? So like I grew up with my mom. She's a boss, right? So like I can't wait to have my kids and I can't wait to have daughters so I can put that mentality in them. So if you want to come here and say, hey, we need to tell women they could do anything they want, I'm down to hear it. But if you're gonna if you're gonna come here and start the conversation as men are holding down women, men are trying to impress women, and men are paying them less, nah, you're I think, just not no, asking. I, I'm not saying that men are holding women back, but what I'm saying is that women have started at a disadvantage because I think it starts from decades ago when men were the breadwinners in the family and women were. The no, that's ones. that's another thing we gotta acknowledge. Like women waited for the perfect time to fight for equality. What do you mean? Like five thousand years, men have been fighting lions, and tigers, and buffaloes hunting, fighting world wars, right? And women were like, oh, we'll, we'll just pick the berries. No big deal. We got that. The second we put uh, air conditioning in office buildings, women are like, we want equality. Well, it's I like, think, all yeah, right, I, well done, ladies. No, you I played think, the long I game. Think part of it is that for women back then, having, I don't think you were dying to enter having, World War II. Having I don't think you were dying to enter World War II. I don't think there were women like, we want to be on the front lines I'm as sure well. Were, I'm sure there were some women out there that one, wanted to Joan be. One, Joan of Arc. definitely were. I know. <laughs> We got one lady, she got burned across, Panther. and they're like, we're not doing that no more. Did you just use a <laughs> fictional movie? That's how few women were in the army. You got to use a fictional movie about a fictional place but, in but Africa. But you know what? Let's talk about women having babies also, because that does prevent you from doing certain things as far as being pregnant physically. I'm going to keep it real. Once a woman has a baby, if she doesn't love her job, going back to work is beneath her. Having a baby is a job, though, and raising a no, child. No, I'm not saying yeah. it's not. I mean, like, once you bring life to this world. Yeah, but some women, you got you to gotta be able to afford that baby. Ab absolutely, you know absolutely. I mean? But I'm just saying, like, let's, you, you got a wife, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm not sure if she, she works outside of, uh, you know, doing the podcast with you. I don't know anything no. about She doesn't. Mm -hmm. But, like, let's say she was just working at, like, an accounting firm. Correct. She puts a life out in the world. And then she got to go back to this accounting firm, and her boss is like, can you make copies? And it's like, I just made a copy of a person. Mm -hmm. You're not going to tell me what... To do anymore, like I need to be with that baby. But that's so, easy to say, but a lot of women can't afford to. Absolutely, and, I'm with you on that. All I'm I saying tell you is, this, if you can, and there are, are women who can, I do not, I do not criticize them at all for wanting to stay home with the baby. And we're doing this weird thing. We're like, well, why don't you get back and work? Like being a housewife, there's something wrong with that. Like no, raising your child, that, if you have the privilege to do it, mm -hmm. if you have a situation like you, that is an honorable profession I or an honorable kids, thing. Absolutely. And I, I think agree about with it. That. Think that's about hard for work you. and important work. Like you got five kids. The, the calm that you must have knowing that the person raising them you trust? Absolutely. Not like, even raising them is there. This person is there. That's but so I do, I do remember yeah, um, being... I had a babysitter when I was young. She would just put me in a, in a swing. And leave the TV on. Leave me there! I would have rashes on my balls as a kid. And my mom told me she followed the babysitter and hid in a bush. Once She was like, why did my son have rashes? She would just drop me in a swing in the park and then just go sit on the bench and leave me there for hours. Damn. 
and my mom was just sitting hiding in a bush. And I was like, you could have stepped in 15 minutes. Yeah, you didn't let me you know leave the me there for two hours, man. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a little creepy. All I'm saying is, like, it's for me, like, childbirth is and, and raising kids is so important. And for us to belittle it as, like, oh, she's just a housewife. Oh, just, like, the most important job you could have. Raising right, no, the next I generation totally of people. I hundred percent agree with that. That's a decision. But there are some women who don't have to work that prefer to work also. So it's really That's just thing. Your You love decision. your job. Like, if, if you have children... They'll be right up here with me. <laughs> exactly. You can have wax <laughs> looking after them in a work? nursery. Why can't you? Okay, I'm just asking. But I do, like, when I was 22 years old, my friend, she had a baby really, um, you know, she was the youngest one of us, like, to have a kid right after we graduated from college. And I remember her being like, I cannot wait to get back to work. I'm so tired of just being in the house with the baby all the time and yeah. not being around other people. Yo, that's something that they don't talk about enough. But, like, like, are were you in the suburbs, Envy? No, growing up, I live in the suburbs now. Ne- the suburbs now, now. Right, like, when you go back, like, you have, you, your wife is with your kids. Correct. Right? And, like, in the suburbs. That is isolating. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like, we're not supposed, we're supposed to be communal. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, we're supposed to raise kids in a group. You got a couple kids. You got mm-hmm. a couple kids. Being in the house alone, just you and the baby talking baby talk, and then you come home from a long day at work, you're tired, but that's the first human Absolutely. that your wife has spoken to all day <laughs> she can't wait to. It's like, it's almost unnatural. Mm-hmm. People say raising kids in a city is weird, but I would say for the younger years, it's beneficial to the to the wife who's raising them because you get to go to the store and people and, are always see playing. People. Absolutely, right. yeah, no, it's, I, I get it because you know when I come home when I used to come home and, and my wife has been with the kids all day long and she wants to have a conversation a long drawn conversation and, and I'm like, yeah. that. I've yeah. been talking to Charlotte all day. Absolutely. I can't listen. <laughs> <laughs> I can't listen no like that. No, you're absolutely right. So let's talk about your um your show at Gotham. Yeah, I got five shows this weekend. Uh, mm-hmm. Friday, Saturday, uh, Gotham Comedy Club. Come out. Yeah, absolutely. What's the top of the list of topics for you right now? Oh, I'm talking about it all, man. I think um, this is really the time for me. But... Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm talking about the Me Too movement. I'm talking Facebook? about trans, not Facebook really. I don't really care about the Facebook you don't care thing about as much. It. Yeah, like because it's whatever. Like I almost rather you know everything about me. <laughs> like I want the government to read my emails. I want them to read the text because I know I'm yeah. not gonna do anything yeah, bad. Yeah, like who cares? Exactly. Well, that's you, that's you, but I mean, so I'm sure there, there are people doing things. But it's a violation. And I want them to know, like, if me and you, if we are like sharing like some wild porn, this, you know, like some just weird porn, I'm fine if some government officials like, yo, Envy Schultz and ye are. Nuts. What's a weird? What's weird porn to you? Pregnancy is where I draw the line. I don't. I don't do that. You don't but do not what? bestiality. I don't watch like the pregnancy <laughs> porn. Bestiality is cute, but I don't watch like no. the pregnancy one. Because you never. Well, yeah, I get what you said, but you never had sex with a pregnant woman, have you? Yo, uh, that's a good point, bro. <laughs> Hold on. <You> have, <laughs> Hold on. Yo, that's a, yo. I didn't realize that. Like, I felt in some way I was disrespecting the woman who has a baby coming. Yeah. But if you have had sex with a pregnant woman, you'll probably find some enjoyment. Because the, having sex with a pregnant woman is probably one of the best pieces of vagina you've ever had. Why? Because the baby's pushing on the meat together? No, no, no. Because it's more <laughs> juicier terrible. and it's more wet. It's more, No, that's a baby crying. <laughs> <laughs> that's a baby like, yo, dad, stop poking me. <laughs> stop poking me. What the hell are you doing, dad? No, but it's, Chill. it's more juicy. It's more wet. It's tighter. It's really? Everything feel, it feels amazing, yeah. All right. And you are, now are you, Are is it like missionary? What is the? My wife, she carries small, so it was all over the place. You could do it wherever. Yeah. That's why he keeps her pregnant all the time because he likes it. Yo, that's how you got five kids. Think my, one, of my, my, one of my kids was like four pounds, ten ounces. So she ten ounces very of small. your cum, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but it's enjoyable. Just came out, threw up immediately. <laughs> but it's enjoyable. It's so wet. It's so juicy. It's tight. It's 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 the the I would say a woman I don't that's pregnant any more about releases these vagina. these I don't want to say hormones or feelings but yeah. it's, it's something like you've never had before in your life yo and they probably should be so you stay around them so you might have to but, rethink this pregnancy no thing. but this is why we need to talk about stuff like this is why we need yeah, to have these conversations truth. because if I didn't say that you wouldn't have given me different perspective mm-hmm. and right now we're in this place where we're so afraid to have any conversation we're so afraid of being wrong because the second you're wrong you know they victimize you on Twitter they just kill you only for three days. That's right, until some new stuff pops until up. Until some new so you stuff pops up. You just gotta wait. You just gotta wait, <laughs> you just gotta wait, wait it out. out. But, but that's how everything is, and people don't like to have those conversations. People like to judge, and I noticed that with Twitter. But, you know, like you said, the best thing about living in the suburbs and being in your own confinement, as long as your confinement is good, who cares? And yeah, as long as you're paid, too. As long as you have the comfort. That too. 
Yeah, but <sighs> there, you know, if if a woman feels like I need some other human interaction and like to be around people, that's on you know I, that's understandable too. Yeah, well, that's why sometimes as a man you have to make sure you say, you know what, babe, I got the kids this weekend, go out and do what you got to do, or I'm home, babe, I got the kids, go do what you got to do. Because I remember she that. was going. It's my friend. She was going crazy. She was like, I have to get back to work. I cannot take just me and the baby in the house. You know. But the second she leaves that baby. But she was working. It wasn't like she was, you know. But she's gonna miss him the second crazy. she leaves him. Yeah, absolutely. and that's good too. You should miss your baby as soon as you leave. Oh, absolutely. But yeah. I think that we, as men, like we have the ability to leave a little bit easier. Yes. You, you know didn't what I mean? Like we didn't have child. a baby, a five-pound <laughs> baby, come out of our, butt yo, or our vagina. Yo, but that's the true thing. But like, and I think about that. Like, it comes out of you, and that's why you love and you're so attached to it. And like, on and you some have to we, breastfeed, so you're so connected. I mean, it's, it's attached to you. It literally attached to you. But like, that's how I feel about my dumps. Hmm? Your tests or your dumps? Like, I look at them after. And you... Like, you don't look at them? Absolutely. You hold them? You look them? at them. You don't hold them, but you'll be like, wow, that one didn't even break. I do the you same. You know what I mean? Like, I'm the same yo, I'll be like, that one's a that, long that's one. That's it, yeah. And then when you do that, you be like, yo. yo. I did one push. I did one. I didn't need any Kegel exercises, no Lamaze classes. I thought I was the only one that did that. <laughs> no, but it comes Taking out of us. shit is not the same as having a baby, guys. That's the closest. Says you. It's not. It's okay. the closest. You get with us, you get on our level. Now, let me say something. <laughs> but I'm bugging out here, too. You are supposed to look at it, though, to see if it, it comes out of us. Of course, I look. I see the seeds. I try to think about what meal it was. You know what mm-hmm. I mean. And it's it's a but it comes out of us. So imagine your poop could could talk. So you calling our babies pieces of shit? In a weird way. In a weird way. In a weird way. <laughs> I get the connection. <laughs> Gaga, mama, dad, dad. I'm saying something. <laughs> you know what? Andrew shows Gotham Comedy Club Friday through Saturday. Get your tickets now. Do you know the website? Uh, yeah, it's uh, Gotham Comedy uh, Club dot com, I believe, or the Andrew Schultz uh, dot com. You could you could go check that out, man. And um, yeah, it'd be so good, man. I'm I'm gonna be taking the tour to Europe too, man. I just if that's cool, if I announce that. So how you gonna oh, ta- yeah. how you gonna take the podcast? Um, well, I'm gonna be gone for a week, man. Maybe you'll pull up. Oh, maybe oh. you'll. Uh, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll pull if up you're not annoyed by Charlotte, man, I'm too annoyed, man. I can only it's too much. A couple hours at a time, man. A couple <laughs> hours at a time. I like this venting session. That's what we should have done. <laughs> we should have just had a, a what's it called? But but yeah, I'm gonna do the tour in uh, Europe, and uh, the pre-sale tickets go on sale April 13th. Um, if that's cool. If I just say a couple days, yeah, I know how many international. Go ahead, go ahead. You guys, I'm sure you're already aware of it, but like anytime I travel overseas people have found brilliant idiots through the breakfast club mm-hmm. and it, it, it's wild to think like you got on youtube and you got on there in a way that like mtv really didn't right. and that's why mtv is, is falling off because mm-hmm. youtube has replaced them in terms of like what that demographic listens content, to. correct but like you guys have a medium which is radio and radio has fluctuated in terms of listenership but the internet has exploded and you know i've seen it happen through you guys and i'll be in sweden and people come and be, yo, don't you do brilliant idiots? Yeah, how do you find about how do you find about brilliant idiots? Oh man, I listen to the Breakfast Club every morning. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's a wild putting something out there in the world. You and Charlamagne met through MTV, right? We met through MTV. We're doing Guy Code and right. all those shows. And you know, I had a bunch of TV shows on MTV. That was a that's why I we even did the uh a couple episodes of your guys' show. You guys had that like hip hop wrap up show. Yep, 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 yep. Um but yeah, so I was doing MTV stuff for a while and then um why, how did you guys connect so strongly as opposed to all the other people that were on Guy Yo, we would just argue. Like, the Brilliant Idiots is no different than, like, our text messages mm-hmm. or our phone conversations mm-hmm. throughout the week. It would just be an idea, and we'd just kind of go at it. and like. But it was, it was always an interesting way. And, like, I like people who, like, I think a sign of intelligence, of intelligence is when, when someone disagrees with you, they don't call you stupid. You they they're curious absolutely or they offer another thing. What we do now, I've noticed, especially on Twitter, is like the second someone disagrees with you, they make you radioactive, mm-hmm. right? Like, and they'll use something about your life <laughs> to make you bad, absolutely. right? Like, like you just went through that dildo thing, right? Yeah. So I'm sure anytime okay. anybody disagrees with you now, right. like you could have a perfectly mm-hmm. good point, but it's like, yeah, but that's why you got dildos in you. That that is true, but you know what? But see, that, that now is, taking it out of context, if no one understands the story of what happened uh, yeah. with him, <laughs> oh come on, so yeah, everybody knows that. Shit. <laughs> know. now, if you don't know, we're that. talking to family so, here, right? In case you don't know, somebody posted a fake story that I like uh, he nine and a half inch dildos <laughs> and the thing. But you know, what? It, it doesn't bother me because I know it's not true. Yeah, but you know the funniest stuff. It about used to that? things like that would bother me, but now I'm at an age. <laughs> it's actually right now. funny though, because I, I it's not a big deal. Because it's such a crazy story. I think a crazy story is actually just funny. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And at first you freak out because you care so much about your reputation. I think as you get older, at least I've been trying to do as I get older is like accept myself more. Mm -hmm. Because the more I accept me, you know what I mean? The less you could say about me. Because it's worse when the story sounds like it could be true when it's not. 
But, but I think it's yo, better when it's nine sounds and a half crazy. was so specific. Like I didn't even think they made half inch size. You know, like you can't even get a twelve and a half sneaker. How you could get a penis? Right. It uh, goes twelve to thirteen. See, but the bad part is breaking up here with these guys. Oh, they went. They're like the constant barbershop joke. Yeah, so yeah, you gotta yeah, hear yeah. it every day. Yeah, yeah. Anything. It's be like, "Good morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy. Dildo ass." <laughs> it happens every day. But yeah. and you know what was the best is that they pulled up this old tweet that Envy has yeah. sent to me. Oh yeah, you know what happened? Because I tried to, I tried to <laughs> Yo. do a prank on her a couple of years ago. So <laughs> it was like five years Yo. ago. But I made the intern go to the store and buy a dildo, and I put it in her bag. It's over. It's done. So she the body put, bag, right? That's... So she put it. She was like, "That I had, I found Envy's dildo." They found those tweets Yo, from five from years ago. 2011. Yo, how much? How how little time do you have? I mean, how how much time do you have? Like, I'm too busy to scroll <laughs> through one Twitter thing at all. But the fact that you could go through seven years of tweets. To but find I'm not one gonna lie, it made it seem very legitimate when they put up that old tweet and everybody started reposting it. Oh, dude. They were like, yo, he's been doing this for years. For years. <laughs> that's the story. <laughs> yo, that's the story, man. <laughs> see, but, see, but if if I was into that, I would say it. And the reason I would say it no, is, no, you wouldn't. Not would. I'm married. Who am I impressing now? If I liked Yo. it, I, I wouldn't care. Gia said you Yo. like it bigger no, than that. No, she don't. Hey. <laughs> we'll pull it's, up that audio. The, no, but it's the truth. But if I enjoy <laughs> she it. She said you like it bigger? <laughs> she did. My she wife didn't say was that. up here and she was Joe. She plays along too. She was like nine and a half. He likes it bigger. But. Yeah. If I liked it, <laughs> yo, that's what you gotta do. But you gotta I lean in. It, but if I liked it, you lean in. If no, I but that's it, how you take away the power, right? <laughs> if I liked it, I lean would say it because I, like I'm mad. <laughs> lean back. Who am I impressing? Who's gonna test me to find out? Yeah, Only yeah. my wife would know. Well, so. I was impressed because that's a lot. <laughs> yo, nine and a half is a lot of dick, bro. <laughs> Dude, I that's was a lot. Like, have you ever had a Subway sandwich? That's only like two and a half more inches. Yeah. And I don't even like a finger in my butt. The fact that you can take that big of a dildo is crazy. But you don't like a finger? No. What about tongue? Not really. She if says I'm she drunk. get muddy ass when she get the tongue in there. Yeah, ass. I don't really like the feeling of my butt being wet. Really? No. You I don't ever think go swimming? Be wet. You never taking a shower? As soon as I get out of the pool, I definitely dry off. I don't like feeling butthole like, first. Yeah, butthole <laughs> first. <laughs> you got one of them like diving towels that absorbs all the water. Like your butt isn't supposed to feel wet, am I right? I mean, why not? I just got my buddy eating recently, so I'm very into it. Oh, that was the first time? It was my first time, yeah. And you, Okay. How does that happen? Did you request it or she just did it? Honestly, I just I, I just felt it. It was like God was speaking to me. God's plan. It was God's plan. <laughs> I just I just lifted one leg up and she dove for it. It was wild. Wow. Yeah, you know she how many for it. she probably ate? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> she, she was very you, proficient. Did you, did you kiss her after? No. <laughs> and she was throwing her butt near me to like eat it. You we, know, no, I did, but like we were doing 69. And like what's funny is I was like, there's no way I'm eating your butt. It's too soon. Yeah, I, I don't even know yours. you. Like, what, what am I, a hoe? <laughs> I'm not a slut. Had you just showered at me? <laughs> nah, but then the next time I took a shower, I prepped it and everything like that. Yeah, I got a really hairy butt. It's a, it's a whole, a whole problem. It's a hole. It definitely is. It, it definitely is a hole. But I'm not like, <laughs> hey, do whatever you want to do. My concern with the butt stuff is like, I don't want to know I like it. Because I don't do like it. I know, but I don't want to know. Like, I don't need more ways we to come know. fast. Mm. Okay. It like, makes you come. No, but like I, I don't need more things to turn me on. Like you sex think you for could me, come just from somebody eating your nah, butt? chill, chill, chill. I need friction in your butt. I need friction on the penis, <laughs> <laughs> on the penis, yo. You're wild. <laughs> but maybe I don't know. That's see, that's another myth. I don't like. You know how girls, you, you know how girls always tell that myth. They're like, yo, you yes, got a G spot in your butt. You do. They, they, this is. Women all make up the craziest I, shit in I've the world, though. That's a from, scientific thing. A woman didn't make that up. Let me ass. ask you a question. I've been wiping my ass for 34 years. Did you never once have I wiped it like I should go a little deeper, see what's up there. Yeah, but that doesn't. that's because you haven't done it. Like, wiping your ass is different than So you're putting... saying it feels uncomfortable, feels uncomfortable, and then boom, I'm coming. Yeah. That's not how bodies work. It's like a button. My whole dick feels good. You got to get that button. Nah, this is what girls say, so they put a finger in your butt, so when you break up with them, they could be like, that's why I put a finger in your butt. Right. What's wrong with that? I'm not going to give you some insurance. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not going to give and that on really you. And it's really good for your bowel movements. That's what we got to do. You know what? I'm not talking to you guys anymore. Andrew what? Schultz, the Gotham Comedy Club. <laughs> he likes his butt getting eaten. Uh, Angela Yee doesn't like muddy butt. But we appreciate That's you right. for joining Yo, us. Yo, thank you guys so much for actually staying for the interview, man. This is a great yeah. combo, I love man. that Charlamagne set this interview up and then dipped out. Yeah. yeah. But we had a good combo. Maybe, we, uh, maybe uh, let me throw a jab at Charlamagne. Maybe a better one between the three of us. Without Charlamagne here. Mm. Ooh. Ooh, what's up, Charla? Mm, Hot takes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. <laughs>